This government meeting is brought to you by Eastworks and our local cable subscribers. It is 6 p.m. on August 22nd, and I will now call to order this meeting of the Conservation Commission. Uh, this meeting of the East Hampton Conservation Commission will be conducted in person and simultaneously via remote participation online to the greatest extent possible. Every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so despite best efforts, we will post on the City of East Hampton website an audio or video recording transcript or other comprehensive record of recording of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. Should an interruption occur in which the online meeting ends abruptly, both the in-person and online meetings will not be restarted, and all agenda items will be automatically continued to the next scheduled meeting. Uh, are there any public concerns, non-agenda items? Uh, I've not received any. I just see someone is here. They're not sure what item they're here for, but feel free to send something in the chat if you have something, a public concern. But otherwise, I've not received any formal requests. All right. Hearing none, we'll move on to public hearings. Uh, first order of business is a public meeting request for determination of applicability filed by Garrett Stover on behalf of the West Comet Conservation Trust for a crossing replacement project at the Pomeroy Meadows Conservation Area off Ranch Avenue, map 152, lot 216. Uh, Garrett, do you want to introduce yourself for the record, please? Yeah, sure. Uh, Garrett Stover, 55 Fairview Avenue, Northampton. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I'm a volunteer with the Scott Conservation Trust, and I'm the lucky manager of placing uh, uh, pedestrian bridge which collapsed back in May, March, many months ago. And for various reasons, it's taken us a long time to figure out what we could do and what we want to do. We finally got to this point. Um, so the, the previous bridge was a, a wood structure um, 24 feet long. And uh, early after the experience with the collapse, what we'd like to do is put in a very similar bridge longer um, so that it's the there is a version along the bank to expand the, the bank width and um, we're going to use aluminum stringers rather than wood. Um, previous ones were pressure treated, but they still slide it out. And uh, as everybody knows, anything to do with infrastructure is difficult to accomplish these days. Um, the people fabricating the bridge or Berkshire Bridge in iron up in Pittsfield. And as I was telling Cassie on the site visit, um, he managed to get the last two uh, 36 foot aluminum I beams in the whole country. <laughs> I was looking for, for weeks trying to find them. I apologize that I don't have a detailed design of the bridge in terms of the exact width. It will be pretty close to the previous one. The, um, the fabricator, they're wonderful people, but they're, you know, getting onto their schedule at all was a challenge. And I haven't, I did wanted to ask them to help me to get the drawings of the railings and stuff like that. We are going to reuse the existing footings, which were not removed when the bridge was collapsed. The pieces were removed. Um, so, the, from our perspective, our expectation is that there will be no, um, no additional excavation to accommodate the needs of the bridge. Um, there's a flat area next to, to the footing. So that um, we have space for that extra six feet bridge. So what was I assume these pictures were seen are the previous bridge. That's oh yeah, so sorry. This is what Garrett. This is what you submitted to me. So I don't. Yeah, <laughs> I was trying to hope, like make it match what you're saying. So this is the previous bridge that's no longer there, the original design. Yeah, uh, a railing. 
yeah. pictures I had were in oh, pre gotcha. yeah. okay. And so then these are the existing footings that are now there still. Right? Because there's that stick. Um that are in place. And then this is just kind of you showing like the kind of staging area. The south footing is up uh, up ahead. And I was just kind of going through showing these pictures of where the two um, connection points will be. But it sounded like when we were talking about it on the site visit, and Sarah was there as well, um, Commissioner Carr was there, uh, that there's not really going to be much in the way of ground disturbance for the installation just because they're going to use the existing footers. Or no, the, it's, it's, it is a challenge. There's uh, two scare cases leading into this point from Ranch Ave. Um, what I'm hoping we can do is toward the end of Ranch Avenue, Ranch Lane, because it is. And uh, well, hopefully the rollers get the girders down to this flat area here. Yeah. Um, and then it will be a challenge getting them across the stream. Um, but I'm hoping we can lay down some um, two by sixes basically rotate them into place so that they're not dragging them in the stream. Remember the bank. I, I can't promise to hold the bank. Um, and any disturbance, but that was the attachment. So I guess I'm a little bit confused because you're saying you want to make the bridge longer to avoid issues uh, from future erosion, but if you're reusing the footings, aren't you effectively keeping the bridge the same? Yeah, I mean, it, so it's, it, it's an interesting area. It's, it's basically silt on top of the clay layer, mm -hmm. and the clay is down at the bottom of the, the ravine there. Yeah. Um, and, you know, considering the, the, the it's been almost 10 years, since the bridge was constructed. And from my early experience, you know, scouting the trail, I would, and in light of all those rain events, it's it's remarkably stable considering the soils. Um, so I think that um, it's, it's unlikely that it will erode more. The, the far side is the outside vent. But it's very strange because the, the, the stream emerges out in the open and then it goes underground. And then it, so it actually, where it crosses now, it's completely around it. So it's wet above it. And down below. Yeah, so, I can. Yeah, it, it's really just insurance. Who knows what's going to happen in the next. Pictures everywhere else in the country. Sure. So, this is from the site visit that we did on the 20. What day was that? I can't remember, but I'll tell you in a second. Um, just close up of the footings again. So, yeah, like Garrett was saying, the, the water kind of disappears here. At, and I don't know if you can see my cursor at all. There's this fern in the corner, kind of in that area, and it starts going underground. I tried to get it close. That's the far footer. You can see it's dry. This is the stream bed area here. Looking, uh, I want to say downstream. This is the path. So they were talking about bringing, coming down this slope here. The trail goes, you know, forward kind of where this clearing is, but they were talking about coming down the slope with the, to bring the materials in. The is this the uh, bridge that brings you to the stairs? Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's a lot of staircases on the far mm -hmm. So there's no proposed excavation, and all work will be done by hand with hand tools. Yeah. This work goes Maybe to our detriment. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Are there questions from the commission? On the 16th. Second. So okay. Um, I would say, given that there's no excavation um, and we're replacing on top of the existing footings, I don't 
don't see that there's any alteration. So there's still we can. I think like, at the time of the original construction, there were no corrosion controls necessary because there was no disturbance. So I don't think there's been any issues with that at that time or over the years either. It actually didn't have the original application because the construction contractor conservation works with the application. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think we would be potentially looking at a negative determination type two that the work described is within an area subject to protection but will not remove, build, dredge, or over that area and therefore does not require a filing of the notice of intent. I am prepared to make a motion. The motion to issue a negative determination. Of which type? Two. Right. Do we have a second? Second. All right. All those in favor will call vote. Fletcher? Aye. August? Aye. Carnes? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Yeah, it's okay. All right, so we can fill out your paperwork and give it to you right now if you want to wait. Yeah, I'll just cut scan it and then give you the original. So you should be good to go. Thank you. Yeah. All the people that have been able to get the Oh, yeah. Oh, that's more of a, I will notify you when it's super interesting. Cool. Is that one of the bigger properties that you have? Yeah. 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 That's funny. We have some aluminum products for, that we need for a project, and the um, contractor just said, Yesterday, that their quota is 50% higher than it was like once a month. Um, well, our, our our alternative was basically buying a um, dock, aluminum dock oh, yeah. bridge with metal railings. <laughs> and that was going to be $20,000. And Berkshire Bridge and Iron, who likes us. Yeah, he knows the calculation areas. If you get under like, 7,500, that's really good. Yeah, yeah, nice. yeah. What's that? You know what I'm looking Probably just like certain structural efforts that. You know, like the manufactured products that are getting used by different places. You know, I heard a story actually, like last year, that Amazon bought every single like available steel I beam in the entire country in anticipation of building warehouses. But just like weird right. stuff like that going on. That's what I mean. Since steel, yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's like with the. The big dig in hay bales, with the price of hay bales, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and then, I was telling me, um, at Cottage Street, there's a company that does actual models. They did a model for Bill Gates' house. And he bought, like, every Atlantic uh, uh, white cedar. <laughs> it's basically like a Lincoln Logs structure. Yeah. Um, there's hundreds of these things, so nobody could find it. That's fine. 
much money has transfer in some places. The traditional aluminum came from like the Niagara Falls area. They used the hydropower from up there and uh, get out. Or coming off the Great Lakes, Alcoa, Reynolds, maybe you should go to the one about the hydropower, but I just don't know about that. It's probably still the case somewhat. But uh, yeah, I don't know what supply chain take up this happening like now, but clearly something's going on. <laughs> Better question like, what supply chain is going on right now? It's the most designed to account that they have. The damage when you tell them they have to look like they really have to look hard to get all that core fabric. Because it was a lot. Thank you. Next item is a request for determination of applicability filed by time bond on behalf of Cover Source Energy for installation of plantings in a gravel parking pad at 29 Reservation Road, map 147.30. Do I understand that this is being well, yeah, it just it hasn't even been opened yet because they didn't delete the lad. Um, the lad wasn't submitted in time, so it's just going to be heard on the twelfth of okay. September. Okay, so we'll revisit that back. in September. Next, we have a request for a certificate of compliance. B. Abel Jr., Mass EP file number 151B002, seeking partial certificate for a now federated portion of 95 Northampton Street, known as 109 Northampton Street, originally associated with an order of resource area delineation that was reported against the property, formerly Map 128113. And uh, I know you're here. On for this item. Do you want me to explain real quick to the commission or do you want to go first? Or? Yeah. Please sit down. I think we reviewed it, so I'm comfortable with doing that. Okay, awesome. Yes, yeah, so this is a little atypical for certificates and compliance um, in that it's they're seeking it for an, an order of resource area delineation, also known as an ORAD. Um, and the reason is is because the the order of resource area delineation was recorded against the property. There uh, the property owner has gone through a process of separating out a new parcel from that original main one, and they're going through the process of selling the parcel, right? And through the title search, they came up that this order is reported against the, the property. So they have to have, have a way to have that lifted administratively. That typically is through uh, the issuance of the certificate of compliance. On the certificate of compliance paperwork, there are two possible options that seemed applicable. One is uh, order of resource area delineation is the last choice. Uh, and the other one is partial certificate compliance. And I spoke with DEP about it and they were thinking that partial may be more appropriate in that it's just for a piece of the property that doesn't have any resource areas in it. No work has been done. And the language for their uh, order of resource area delineation option just doesn't seem to fit as well as the partial. And the partial gives you the option to put in some notes about it then you can put in some language just explaining like this is for what will be parcel 109 Northampton Street. It's a partial certificate. It's for the order. Um, that was the suggestion uh, from DP. And it seemed like that would be appropriate for what you guys are seeking. That would solve uh, our problems. And we don't have to address the balance of the property whatsoever. It's distinct from the many issues that are associated there. Right, so I didn't know. Back up oh, yeah. for just a moment. Would you please introduce yourself? Oh, yeah. Hi, <laughs> Don Abel, an attorney. My Practice at 203 Northampton Street. I represent Courtney DCM Palestine. Thank you. Carry on. Thank you. Sorry about that. That's correct. Um, so, yeah, uh, this way, too, the commission doesn't have to release the entire order of resource area delineation from 93 Northampton Street. I don't know how that could potentially come into play for this enforcement order that's actively going on, but maybe it's better to keep it in there for now, knowing that we have ways to get lifted if needed later. Um, so, yeah, it all seemed like the best way to tackle it. But I went out there to site visit today. There's no work has been done there. Uh, it's basically like a driveway or like a little gravelly area that's going to become Starbucks, I think. Does that that's right? intense. Yeah. So. Do you have like a 
Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. There's yeah. one in there, and I'm going to pull it up here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's really helps cool. So this is the Courtney piece. This is the uh, Tasty Top ice cream stand. Uh, so all of this property, except for this piece right here, have already been conveyed out by Courtney East Kimson to Tasty Top Development LLC. Uh, so this is the parcel that we're talking about releasing some resource areas here in bunkers. This doesn't ever get involved with that. So what we're looking to do is just to put on record as a matter of record that this piece is being your issue with the certificate of compliance only as, as to respect to this piece. Uh, and as there was never any work done, I can't say I can went around with this. Typically, orders of what and termination aren't reported, or if they are, they're done with a, as part of a, uh, there's a limited sort of work a lot. Here, there was all it was was a delineation that never should have been recorded. But since it is on record, it creates a cloud, let's say. And so, I mean, the big monkey bucks in Chicago and wherever else have decided that they'd like to release it formally. Um, so, that's what we're here for. It's just to let this piece out of it, and it doesn't affect the property. Do we know originally was that order of resource delineation associated with any kind of enforcement actions? Or? They were just identifying the issue of wetlands. Just to get it in front of you so that it was adopted, so that as Stop and Shop, this is the Stop and Shop person. So as Stop and Shop is preparing their development work and the plans, they had the resource areas identified and, and identified by and certified by you. Uh, no work had been done, no work was ever done, everybody's out there shot. Um, so it was a, just a procedural matter, and I, I think somebody just grabbed it, recorded it, and that was going to clean it up. matches up with what I've seen in the files for it. I have all the files here if anyone wants to see them, but uh, it matches up that that's the case. Okay. And we've been out to this parcel, <laughs> several of us recently, uh, and I think all of us who there, know that the wetlands are, the resource areas are, in fact, further back. This is basically the, the driveway where parts for Burger, you know, the yep. dirt area, and then a little tall shack is back up here recently. So it's a very narrow. Are there any questions from the commission? So, just as a recommendation, one of the pages in there, uh, I did like a little draft and I wrote up some notes about what you could consider putting in as the notes in there, um, just explicitly referencing 109 Northampton Street and how it's separate. Mm -hmm. I think it's a cover letter. Kind of oh, yeah. And um, mm -hmm. if you, I don't have a sign, but it, it kind of summarizes it because I, I outlined the history and why we're here and then to, so that you didn't have to read a bunch of lawyer writing. I kind of just put a summary of this was sort of my trying to see how Cassie's recommendation basically saying that, and I can share that. So I'm going through uh, the engineer and the assessor's office. Uh, they've subsequent to my application, they've identified this parcel now is, it remains as map 128, 113-1. So this remains for the assessor's records, map 128, 113, which is shown on the original output on the original order. So what the assessor's office has done is assigned this parcel, at least for now, until they put 128, 113-1, which they often do when there's a, a divided piece of property. So if this is 113, that's 113. So it may be helpful since you use that on your, on your forms if we identify 109 North Street as 128, 113-1. Yeah, yep, that would be helpful. And formally, 93 North Hampton Street or whatever. All right, so Patsy's recommendation was for a partial certification. Um, and we have an opportunity then to spell out the project areas or work subject to this partial certification, partial certification that have been completed and or released from this order. She is recommending that we state that this was not for an OOC, just for the ORAD, and only for the portion, uh, which is now 109 Northampton Street, we can indicate there the new map and a lot number 
uh, and but it was formerly a portion of 95 Northampton Street, 128, 113, and 114.1 that was separated in a sale in 2022. Is it you have a note here not subdivided? Is that because that language is important in terms of how well, we're talking like, about it? it well, so, talking about subdivisions. Subdivision. This is an ANR rule number four. It's just not technically subdivisions. Yeah. yeah. Separated. Any other word, we just don't want to get some lawyer tripping open at that. Okay. So All sense. right. So we can say separated in uh, an ANR. Yeah. And if you want to recommend, I, I guess I would request if Martin is in there to visit for real estate purposes, um, my letter, I read that, uh, my letter, we need to it around. Uh, is is referencing if we can the the, uh, the proposed parcel as shown on plan book two fifty one that way it's very clearly did I put that in there? Uh, no. I think so. I guess I, I, I did not it's, it's referenced in there on oh, yes in the first page. Okay, you only handed me a copy of the yeah well I, yeah. so so that would be So that's page 151, page 105. Yeah. Uh, Did you just put HCRD book 251? Sorry. Cassie, can we, is there any reason why we can't attach this letter as additional documents? Uh, Will they let us do that? I don't know. I don't see, you could say see attached and do it that way. Um, in we can theory, write some things in, but then I'll just say see attached. Yeah, I would say do both just in case because I don't know what the I've never attached anything yeah. to, a, to a certificate, so I would be surprised if they were against that. But I guess if we can cover all our bases, that would be ideal because, um, who's they? DEP, yep. I mean, I referenced it, uh, in the my request that I was saying, so it's not inappropriate to incorporate my reference. Yes, so yeah. I don't have any objection to that. Sure. Any further questions or discussion? Thank you. I'd love to issue a uh, partial certificate of compliance for the Conrad uh, for one of the North Street. Second. Roll we'll call vote. All those in favor? Fletcher? Aye. August? Aye. Weeks? Aye. Carr? Aye. Widermar? Aye. Motion carries. All right. And again, if you want to wait a few minutes, we can yeah, deliver this back to you. Thank you very much. Awesome. Did you get your cookies? Yeah. Yes. I can't believe it, but we did. <laughs> That's crazy. On hold music or something. <laughs> <laughs> He's kept the conservation commission team. You sing a song at the moment. Oh, boy. <laughs> you good? Be careful what you wish for. Oh, God. <laughs> Thank you. 
Uh, <laughs> one of my professors did that once. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. Rubber bands. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's I can't. I know what that. I can't what that frog is too, but I heard it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we have to keep I used to some storm on the tank. The marijuana facility is one of the two settings while you were staring at us when we came up with exactly like a conservation mission versus the plan for the last two weeks. So, what a Oh gosh, I love that. <laughs> Reverse. Don't, don't play that. I was, I was wondering why NPR and I give credit to nobody in any of like the things, but then it's like if BJ Wiederman wrote our theme song every at least, you know, like every show once a week, it's like, yeah, hey, he must have had a good time. <laughs> agent or something. <laughs> Labor ratio may vary. I have to really bad. I like you. 
Oh, really? Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, we'll come back tomorrow. Well, I'm going to stick around. Well, I need, I think I need some right I'll just have my seat. Are you around for? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll coordinate with y'all. I went sweating there. I went for the watch of mine. I went for the watch of mine. Yeah, yeah. I just got to go. Sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. 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 Then I'll find a lot of control. So just right. I wouldn't mind if they were particular as long as they were consistently particular. It's better. It's inconsistent. Yeah, we do we have any updates on do you need another minute? I'm ready. <laughs> do we have any updates on enforcement actions? Only for magazine or Hampton Street. In that they're still working on the um, peer review, got squared away with the 53 g account, all that good stuff. So great, she's still clipping them up. Okay, next one. If you picked a consultant, what's that? Sorry, that's the one where we had to hire exactly. Stop my associates is the is the consultant. So, all right, open space updates. Anything on Equidale West? No, just waiting for Jay to do the mo. So, okay. um, that's that's the next step. Is so it know that we're waiting? Yes, but I will okay. remind him. Great. <laughs> Uh, anything on labor community? No, nothing. Okay. Uh, compliance updates. Which ones do you have updates? Okay. The first one is for um, 108 Oliver Street. What letter? Um, that is letter, should be M. Yes. Agenda item M. Okay. Um, so this is where we have the, they came in with questions about um, making an edit to the crossing. We thought it was too major to be considered a minor change. So where do we exactly. Stand? So um, it was great. Actually, we talked great. Uh, Mr. Shickman was able to figure out uh, uh, a source of materials, which is cheaper, same design. So it still have the same width and nothing is going to change except for the materials, which weren't actually specified in the plans, just what the shape was, uh, which um, I talked to DP about it briefly today. And they were saying like, yeah, that is the, Typically, the concern is not the, what it's made of, but rather the shape and size of it. Uh, I cautioned Mr. Chickwin that it needs to still meet, you know, the standards of being able to hold emergency vehicles and whatever. He needs to like check to make sure that's all still good. But um, he seemed confident that's going to be the case. So okay. hopefully, it's resolved now. Great. So no change to the original plan. Correct. Excellent. I like that. Yeah. Okay. Next one was item N for the bundled order. Okay. Um, so this is for routine maintenance by DEP, by the uh, DBW. And um, just a question came up. There might be a project coming that's not formally ready to be submitted to the commission, but there was a question of when projects are occurring in areas of natural heritage priority habitat. I don't think that was discussed during when we set it up originally. And so I just don't know, like if it's in a work category, category that is covered and doesn't need to go for a new NOI or RDA, but it's in priority habitat. Does Natural Heritage need the submission of a notice of intent to go through the review process? Or does the commission want that? Or I guess it's kind of two questions really. Just how do y'all feel like that should come into play? So I believe that they should be able to coordinate with Natural Heritage independent of us. Uh, we typically have to wait until they've received a response on an NOI from Natural Heritage to right. make our decisions. But I don't think there's anything that would preclude them from coordinating with Natural Heritage outside of an NOI. Maybe they should be able to. Um, I think they would be filing the great name of the form, but they should be able to file an independent form and I think handle that process separately. Does that sound right to you? Um, I want to say that that works for priority habitat, but not just doing the habitat. Oh. Something for less than the habitat. And I will spend a long time, but I think, I think there's something that fundamentalizes, like, you know, applying natural heritage areas for that reason or something. Right. But it's been a really long time yeah. since I've done anything like that. Might be a good question to run that CEP. But as far as our opinion, if they're able to handle it independently, I think as long as it fits within the categories of work that we had identified and they're meeting all other requirements with different agencies, that that would be 
design and those other sorts of things. It's so sweet. Did you have a question, Sarah? Yeah. I was just, was it related to one of the letters? Or that? So that is, so item N is, I guess, yeah, it was before you were here. The commission issued some, a bundled order of resource area, to, uh, excuse me, yeah, order conditions. And so the point of that is so that the commission, uh, the DBW has kind of a, an overarching standing set of conditions they have to follow generally for projects. Then they come to the commission and say, you know, is this covered under these general conditions or are there extra special things you want us to do? Or is this project complicated enough that we need to do a whole separate uh, notice of intent and there's all these work categories and stuff like that it is like an interesting thing but the idea is the point of it is to help the the dpw which has to do a lot of routine maintenance kind of get through that process a little easier i guess is the way to say it but yeah it's a way of streamlining simple projects that don't have for instance uh direct in water work so like a culvert replacement wouldn't be covered but repainting a road or what One of the ones yeah, we did, yeah, cleaning out a, like a, a drainage thing that had a bunch of of material of like riprap material and cleaning that up. You know, that's potentially within a thing, but they follow all these other general conditions, and it's it should be covered. So, yeah. Right. Great. So if you could check into that and let us know what you find out. No, thanks for your yeah. Thanks for the input. Okay, next one is 99 Mount Tom, Tom Ave, the Cherry Street Project. All right, so I need to recuse from this one because my firm is involved in this project, so I'm going to turn it over to Dan. Okay, so this is for, you know, general, the general update is that uh, they're working on getting all the pre-construction items together. They're going to want to try to get started soon, hopefully later this week, even having the pre-construction meeting. Um, one of the pre-construction items, though, is an invasive species uh, management plan uh, that actually involves PCT. They were kind enough to help with this. Um, so the way it's going to be done, my understanding is what PCT is, is, which you don't have to, you didn't come prepared to speak to this, so I was referencing at you. But uh, <laughs> there's going to be the during construction invasive species management and then the post-construction management. During will be covered by um, the subcontractor to the project, SWCA, and they've created a plan here. And then post will be Wisconsin Conservation Trust and their expertise helping with that. So one of the requirements of the order is for the Invasive Species Management Plan to be reviewed and approved by the commission. Oh, great. Um, through this yeah uh, I have I've been like speaking I spoke to them about it and I think one of the questions was there's a section in there for like herbicide use and that was something that I wasn't sure what the commission would feel about that um and just making sure that like uh the measures that they propose I know that there's some grubbing proposed potentially and uh it's, it's great because it's really not like absolutely overtaken with invasives, which is pretty cool. So, so what herbicide and then grubbing, which is just, like just physically kind of like pulling it on, tilling it up. So I, I think those two places maybe should be reviewed in particular. But um, you talked about before, you never accused yourself. We have talked about this project before. This That time it was for a minor change to the plan in that they were, they had, forgotten to include on the final plan that was approved that this pipe was going to be oh. lined and it wasn't going to change the disturbance right. in any way yeah but yeah so it'll, it'll probably keep coming up too i'm sure this won't be the last time but um yep that's that's what we're working with okay so uh when do they need a uh, decision on this project? um they were hoping you know obviously most projects are always hoping to get the sooner the better so um but if you if you guys need more time, then that, that's what you need. So. And the decision is whether their plan for invasive species management meets the order conditions. Yeah, it was just like the commission feels is appropriate for that area. Um, and so it, the order conditions, let's see, we can pull that up too and see what it asks for specifically. Let's see. So I can read y'all the condition. <laughs> Okay. 
Do we have our Harper's Five on that boilerplate language? Uh, yeah, so I can read. That's a good point too. So we'll, we'll, let's. Um, I'll do that one next. So the first one for the condition of, that requires this, it says. Um, Prior to commencing any activity inside the permittee, their successor and or assigns shall submit the following to the Conservation Commission for review and approval. Uh, C, an inventory of non-native and or invasive plant species within the limit of work shown in the approved plans of record and shall submit a non-native and or invasive plant species monitoring and management plan that addresses construction period and long-term measures to prevent the spread of non-native and or invasive plant species within the project area. The, sub the submitted plan shall include uh, a list of monitors, schedule for monitoring, and sample of monitoring form to be used for review and approval by the commission, um, which hopefully is all included in there. I didn't get a chance to look that close for all of that. And then to Michael's point, um, there is a in perpetuity condition regarding herbicides. So this is in perpetuity condition 67. Pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, and fertilizers should not be used within the 100 foot buffer zone. Organic pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, and fertilizers may be used subject to the review and approval of the commission. Uh, this should be noted in the certificate of compliance and shall be an ongoing condition. So if y'all approve it, then it can be done. But um, it hopefully we'll say in there. Given, I'll just like summarize what this says, basically. Um, so they talk about qualifications of the firm, um, which you know, SWCA has been around for a while. Um, documentation of invasive species. So they found uh, burning bush in four areas, honeysuckle in one location, but two areas of Japanese knotweed, one area of myrtle, and swallow wart in Boulevard, eight, 11 different areas along the project site. Um, initial methods of control. So let's see, so most of the basis plans for the construction plan are located on non residential properties. No work site applications will be conducted to avoid impact on our property. This is, this is initially, most of these plans will be uprooted and disposed during the clearing growing process. The main focus of the invasive management should be to manage the basis of plants along the road, was tree prevention area. First stage, let's see. So re-sprouting will be expected in the spring of 2023, the bulk of the basic plant matter identified. Um, just very careful consideration to be taken with soil stockpile and reuse the plant and contrast avoid reusing soil for invasive plants have been identified. Specifically avoiding the reuse areas where swallow or Japanese not weed or myrtle have been identified as so those soil movement species of gonia that have all. So uh, SWCA will provide oversight to the site contractor during excavation of those areas where the invasives are. So that's good. Uh, soil removal will not be there unless the site monitor is there to ensure about the soils. So let's see. Action care should also be taken when transporting equipment from areas with established tail to swallow work Japanese now we have machine tracks can spread the root time, root rhizome fragments. Paper proliferation of these two species. <clears throat> so that's initially very important. Well, then there's a section on equipment cleaning and stockpiling. So all equipment will be cleaned using brushes, water, and pressed air prior to leaving areas with existing populations of not be swallow or. Um, if hand tools are used in clearing, they will also be cleaned. So that's covered. Small so work techniques that we can be cut during the dormant season without prior herbicide application. Our handling of plant and root material is crucial. And transportation of basic plant root material will be performed in an enclosed structure such as dump truck bed for waste drag transport. And then it goes on to excavation with soil handling. And then follow up spot foliar herbicide applications. If necessary, SWIFT will conduct follow uh, foliar applications of herbicide in September 2022, which is which is next month actually. Yeah. So we're getting a little behind schedule already. I guess we should probably ask for uh, an update on schedule here. 
So the intent of that is to reduce or eradicate invasive species found within the area. The entire project site will be inspected, and then you do a test stage and you know it is identified for future management. So it will only manage target species. Riverside safety. All riverside applications will be performed in compliance with Massachusetts pesticide laws and regulations. And just a summary. Then there's attached photos of the different areas. So it doesn't really specify. Yeah, I don't really see, I don't see a discussion on herbicide type. Did, did, did we say we asked for some kind of like checklist or blog or something like that in the conditions, Cassie? Uh, not for herbicide use, so. just for like who the monitors are going to be and, and when and it's the, like the, the schedule of monitoring. Like, can I read it again? I'd be like, you know. And the condition that said not to use herbicides. So that is a, let's see here. <clears throat> that was the in perpetuity condition. Can't use them without uh, approval by the, for the, by the commission. So the commission could give that approval today if they wanted to. Okay, so the condition reads, an inventory of non-native and advanced uh, species within limit of work. So they gave us that inventory. Sure. Um, let's see, monitoring and management plan that addresses construction period and long-term measures. So this is specifically for construction period. And then a little bit after just with the herbicide application, long-term is gonna be the Skomic Conservation Trust. Uh, and the submitted plan shall include a list of monitors scheduled for monitoring and a sample of the monitoring form to be used for review and approval by the commission. So the monitoring form stuff may apply more to the Piscomic section at the end just when because there might be a, a, a handful of people doing it and I don't uh, have all that information there. I can try something actually. I mean I personally would like to know more about what herbicides are using and how like with not you can do an injection per plant that's very contained doesn't get so much of the brown water. So but Use like right? I'd like to find out. Yeah, I don't know if it says. Is it even doing or not? Doing or not? Spotable here. I don't know. So really, yeah, they, I don't think they talk about different methods for herbicide application or um, what herbicide they're going to be used. Like that thing. It's, okay. so spot spot foliar usually applies like a very pretty careful, you know, um, small dose treatment in different areas, but I don't, I don't say. The, the last sentence of 4.0 says SWCA recommends applying the herbicide rodeo to the foliage of all the observed invasive plant species found at the site during these follow up inspections. So the herbicide is, is rodeo, which I think is. Typical, I think we've got other ones that they there's like the generic name is rodeo, but the technical name is approved for. We can get more information, but I if they're going to apply it, I guess I think rodeo is a formulation of round duck, so oh, maybe that's right. better for you said. In the remote areas that doesn't like disrupt organisms or whatever like that. Yeah. Top Labs and Heiser is the Piscotic board member who knows and special. Yeah. And down. Yeah. So then we don't need to have a specifications of how they're going to remove the swat ore in the path. Uh, it's up to you guys. What what you want to see? If you if you guys want that more information, you can request it. Yeah, I think it sounds like I, I and oh. others would like more information on specific or precise to be used in the application. Are they only using herbs? Sounds like well, no. There's going to do physical removal and then management of the soils during and then the follow up. They're seeming to 
suggest use the herbicide for after the fact. Um, so I can get, there's, there's a couple questions. One, they said herbicide application was going to be in September, in June, September 2022. So that's next month. And then June 2023. So there's a question about September. Maybe we need an update in timeline. Yep. The other piece was um, we can hopefully get like a either a chemical sheet or something about the rodeo herbicide. Just something like other products have been able to give us something that says like this is definitely approved for wetland. And it has that like piece of information. So we can ask for that. And then the last piece was... Where did you see reference to rodeo, Cassie? Is it? It's in, uh, yeah, in that same document it's on 4.0. It's, uh, it's the last sentence, last sentence. Um, so, so yeah, we can do. Uh, let's see. So they say that all herbicide applications will be performed in compliance with the Massachusetts pesticide laws and regulations as regulated by MDAR. Department of Agricultural Resources. Da, da, PPE in contact. They consciously they will be conscious of avoiding contact with any desired native plant species observed on site, and will use marking dyes to signify where herbicides have been applied. To the extent practical, SWCA will inform any members of the public that they should not enter the work area during any herbicide or application, and a spill cap kit will be kept on site will be the, the, yeah, it doesn't say. So if you all want more details about what is involved in the foliar application, this says they basically it will be applied to the leaves, applied to the foliage, um, wherever they see the, the plants. What about the, this disposal? So, all I can work was So uh, excavation to the, the 3.1, these files should be all the disposed off all site or even in the same exact location where they were encountered. Yep. Jack, it's not These, okay. So it says soil removal should not occur in these areas unless, a, S, unless an SWCA monitor is on site to ensure the proper handling of the soils. These soils should be should instead be hauled and disposed of offsite or reused in the same exact location where they were encountered. My my thought is to prevent spread. So that like, if they're already there, then they're there. So the soil shouldn't be braided around and spread around to expand potentially. Once they remove the algae, what becomes of it? Not like spreads spray. I, I, I know, the town is doing it. I just am asking for specifications. Oh, no, like, yeah, no, I trust that. But one, one kind of wonders. Yeah. What's it for? For send it to Ohio? Or? Right, because <laughs> now we're doing this invasive species management with those factors. That is, I think, uh, yes, I, thank you. So, I, I know it has to be disposed of in a particular way. <clears throat> And just trucked in, dumped somewhere. So, yeah. one kind of thing. In small work, it has the hands, correct? I don't know. Uh, it has the hands. They have the hands. It's the Otis Swampy aerial horns. So, they have to do it before they go to Pratt or after they go to Pratt. Probably already not. Can, can we have more detail on this? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's yeah, I'm taking a note and I'll give them all these notes. Um, okay, cool. Let's see. Okay, so there's a note about the swallow wart. It says that swallow wart and Japanese knotweed can be cut during the dormant se season without prior herbicide application. But proper handling of plant and root material is crucial. All above slash below ground material consisting of these species will be disposed of offsite at a landfill. All transportation of invasive and root material will be performed in an enclosed structure, such as a dump truck bed, to avoid spread and transport. All equipment used for transport of invasive material, invasive plant and root material will be inspected and cleaned prior to use with non-invasive material. So right now they're saying a landfill. So I don't know if that answers that question enough for you. I don't know. It says um about rodeo 
material is slightly toxic to aquatic organisms, including a key basis. Kind of the detail and then also to invertebrates and algae. Yeah. So I don't know how acute <laughs> their usage of it will be and how close it will be to the wetlands. Well, what I'll ask for is what the has got in the past, which is basically you can get these documents that will show whether or not you know the the that chemical can be used in those areas. So hopefully we can get them to provide that, or if they can't provide that, then choose an herbicide that, that does have that. So. Um, but so what do you, I mean, how do you feel about the landfill information? Is it, it's too vague. Okay. But, yeah. Uh, the the it's not, I don't remember what we asked for before, but I don't want to see it in the past, if I remember correctly, the commission has just asked for um, proper disposal, like at a facility that accepts that. So I don't know beyond the landfill what that would be necessarily. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't think we have cradle to grave jurisdiction over, you know, these materials once they're generated. Yeah. And uh, yeah. it's, you know, Kind of like we want, if we don't want invasives, then we got to hold our nose on how invasives get got rid of. They're, they're, all of those species are endemic. Yeah. So, is that why they just say don't remove it? I think with that's why you just want to leave it there. Yeah. My 3.0 says that. They're not going to be uh, so when they they're going to cut the plants themselves, but the soil they're saying could either be removed and not reused anywhere else on site or used in the same exact spot. The soil, but the plant material they're going to cut it and we'll dispose of it to a landfill. Is the plan? So um, I can try to get more specific information, but they might just tell us the specific landfill. So I don't know, I don't know what the alternative would be of where to dispose of it. As long as they're not disposing it on like, you know, the adjacent property. Certainly that wouldn't, we wouldn't want that, but. Sure. Yeah. I would think the most we could try to ask for would be it's for it to be bagged. In yeah, that's not a lot of bag. Bag. Yeah. Yeah. Bag. Bag. I, I don't know how much they're going to that's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> you can't win. You can't win. Pick our poison. <laughs> But I don't know if we've asked for that from other sites. I don't know. I think they're not going to do herbicides in the neighborhood. They're just going to concentrate on uh, brickyard growth. I don't think they're going to say what they were going to do in a specific area. So, what they're going to do is the foliar treatment, they're going to, like, wherever they see it, it, it like sprouting again. They're going to apply it to the leaves to the foliage directly. Which could be okay depending upon how close those leaves are to the wetlands and how like, much they're using what they apply it. They're certainly all going to be with 100 foot buffers on. I think you said to assume. But that's my that's my guess. So, so then we want to know how much they apply it. My hope is that, and this what the commission has accepted in the past, is these kind of um, basically like the it's it's like the the chemical sheet on the one that they want to use, and it should explicitly say like can can be used in these you know areas proximity to wetlands whatever, and then the, if if they follow the instructions, so we have to hold them to following the instructions. I think we did that at another site. Yeah, yeah. Same with the now. Right, right. And where are these chemicals? Uh, I think they would have to be like, it's like government, like they can't just make them. The company yeah. doesn't just make them. Like, I mean, then we, now you're questioning like the whole process of a lot of stuff. If you don't trust it to come from MDAR, that's like really hard to overcome that. 
I like my bird. What's that? Yes, they do. That's the, and that's fair enough. That's absolutely fair enough. So it's up to you guys to, as a group, to make that decision. Then, um, what you will accept and what you won't. Why don't we just start getting the plan? Getting the plan. Absolutely. Yeah. Getting some information about the dosage. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay, so yeah, just so that I have all the information we want. Oh, let's see. Update on that. So the update on the scheduling, because it says September, but that doesn't seem to necessarily be uh, the right timeline anymore. It might be, but we just want to double check. And if it's not right, what is the right? What is the updated timeline? Um, we want more specific information about the herbicide. Uh, what type and um, is it been cleared to be used this proximity to wetlands and how much? Um, and then where is the material being disposed of in a landfill? But uh, can it be bagged or you know? Any other, are there any other precautions that can be taken to keep it from surviving and plant I suppose? Like burn pit. Yeah, or a burn pit. Oh, it's not poisoning. Oh, God. Yeah. Uh, does anyone have any other questions about it? Are there any other things we think we'd want to see? So, can we hear from them and in the meantime, we can look up what we had asked other Absolutely. agenda items to do because we had other people that had some. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Japanese yeah. not removable, same herbicide. Fifty Florence comes to mind. Yes. Yeah, yep. I know we had something similar for that, so I can look at that. Can I just come back here? I know these are next questions, but if you've ever been in a Japanese coffee stand, there's no wildlife, there's no insects, there's no invertebrates. You know. The trees. We've had such a whole conversation with people smelling like the chemical stuff. And Tom manages the stuff for a lot of them. He's read everything. He loves their vertical. So there just are situations where you can't do anything else except for the thermal stuff. And places where he bases your on. That do come back. Yeah. Uneducated, somewhat attentive opinion. It's something that you just have to resign yourself to. Yeah. Doing it with utmost care. And most of these contractors, herbicides are really expensive. <laughs> so they're not slapping, they're not spraying it. Yeah. Um, and you do have in there that there are plants that in the native. Yeah. That's yeah. exactly right. Remember, yeah. I, gotten through those I know it's been a long time between each piece, but that piece, yeah, has been approved by the commission already and hasn't been changed as, as far as I know. So I'm going to double check, but yeah, it was approved. And, um, you know, from, from what I could tell, it seemed like the site. At least as it is right now, it's not overrun with invasives. So the really crucial part is keeping it from coming overrun from invasives through the construction process. Because disturbed areas are very uh, susceptible to invasives. Yeah. So keeping it, if not better than it was when, before it was, or at least not getting worse. So, um, but okay, this is really helpful for me. So I know what to ask for. Um, and then uh, you should be able to bring it all to the next meeting. So. Is that a motion to continue for next? Um, I don't think you need a motion. I think you only need a motion if you wanted to approve it. So, because this this item will stay on the agenda uh, until the project is done. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So. Okay. Cool. All right. Julie. <laughs> <laughs> you just hear all that anything. <laughs> They did not add commentary. <laughs> um, okay, I think I have more if we're ready to move on. Great. My last one is for the most recent uh, order conditions that was issued for the 19B15 slash 19B16 right of way line replacement or upgrade to utility line. It's item, I'm sorry, it's item V at the very bottom. 
Um, and so the question was, is that there is, they would request, they're requesting confirmation as to whether the language in condition 55, which is a boilerplate in perpetuity condition restricting the uses of herbicides and pesticides without review and approval by the commission. What they were wondering is that they submit a yearly management uh, plan to the commission as a general for all the right of ways. And their, their hope was that that will work as the um, submission for review and approval. The commission has you know, an opportunity to comment on that submitted plan every time you get it. So their hope is that into the future, they won't have to come specifically just for the site that would cover all the right of ways, including this one into the future for the herbicide application there or whatever they need to use there. Um, the, the utility right of ways do have an exemption to usually do this management. Um, so it's up to you guys if you think that's appropriate. Okay. Yeah, you can let me know that's fine. Okay. I'm just making a note. Okay, cool. And that was it for ongoing projects. I see. Um, I'm just thinking that we're about to run out of letters in the alphabet. Yes. And I'm noticing that, <laughs> for instance, the pump house demolition H expired yes. in June. Mm -hmm. Did it really expire? We didn't extend that. Oh, we? well, it may have been told because of the pandemic. So all of these expiration dates are like potentially told and you can add like a hundred or something days. However long the state of emergency was, you can add that number of days to when the actual expiration is. For the pump house, I've been speaking to Mike Owens about it and I think they're ready to come for the COC. That's why there wasn't this big push to get it extended because I, there's just no more work to be done. The work's done. Yeah. So they just haven't yet. And um, I will talk to him about getting that um, because I think there was a question of as built for it, trying to make sure they have just something to show that it was done the way that they said it was going to be done. Okay. Um, yeah, I will get that sorted out. And the other candidate for that is... Jay. Yeah, and that's now covered under the bundled, bundled order. And like it seemed like to me that... that if they're going to do it again, they could advocate that it's covered under the bundled order. So definitely, that was yeah. the project that inst uh, instigated the yeah. creation of the bundled order. So I wasn't as worried about extending that one either. So yeah. um, I will talk that one. I got to talk to Dan Murphy about it. So it's more just a, 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 a matter of wrangling the uh, paperwork from them. So what about one industrial lot? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, we just recently did the, the extension for that. That's good, though, because, yeah, we got to check those. I just, I'm, like, trying to keep it from getting to page three. Yeah. I just really don't want it to do that, so. All right. um, the meeting minutes, did those get finished? I don't know, so right? I apologize. Okay. Yeah, that was my bad. So we'll deal with that next time. Um... And the wetlands ordinance discussion, um, I believe we had a internal assignment that we were all going to read and be ready to discuss a certain piece, but I will be the first to admit that since I was not at the last meeting, I don't remember what that assignment was. So I propose that we reassign <laughs> ourselves a new task and um, put this on the next time. And I believe, does anyone remember what our task was? I think uh, yeah. we look at different town ordinances and see what we like and yeah. what we should add. I feel like there was something in our nice draft. Think, though. We I have a draft of our own that we yeah. look up to. And Marley wanted, wanted us to look at the ACC. What's that test? The Marco that's what it was for an ACC. That's what I think it was. Yeah. That and then pick out uh, things that we were interested in and we wanted to add. Okay, we did, we did talk about a few things. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if you remember. Yeah, I'm looking at my notes from yeah, the last meeting. Yeah. So the last meeting we kind of talked about, again, um, we wanted to find more exact language to use for the vernal pools slash um, isolated wetland definition to make sure we're including that in the right way. Um, but we wanted to make sure we didn't include stormwater drainage basins and things like that. So that is my main note that I have on there. I, I think that the goal preceding last meeting was to review the MACC 
And I know that there's a bunch of stuff on my end that I was going to try to do and like do more research and isolate. So I just, I just haven't been able to do it, but um, my hope is that for the next meeting, we got a kind of a good chunk of time between now and the next meeting. It's one of those weird ones where there's two weeks. So that should give me more of a chance to um, get after it and send it to you guys. So there is a folder in that bunch of stuff you sent us that's all about basically. Exactly. Yeah. I've been trying to, yeah, I've been trying to like extract it from different. Yeah. That's what I was trying to do, but I, I know it's kind of hard. It's a lot to digest. So I don't know. Like him. Yeah, they're, I think they're currently in the process of updating right. it. Their website is a little confusing because they have all the red really lines. Clear justification for why. Yeah. All right, so let's no. let's reassign ourselves the task of reviewing the draft or the example and the NPC ordinance and discuss that next time. Okay. And then I will, for myself, if it's all right, get more like kind of update everything in the folder and try to get more specific examples and give you more targeted things to consider. If that makes sense? That'd be great. Okay. Thank you, Cassie. Cassie, did you have any other general business for us? Nope. No other general business. Okay. Any other general business from the commission? Anyone likes my questions for Jack? Making a motion to return. Second. All those in favor, roll call vote. Budget. Weeks. Aye. 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 Aye.